You need winners? Let the sports advisor show you how to make money. General Manager Al DeMarco, a former sports reporter and contributor on Fox Sports, MSNBC, and Comcast Sports TV, brings over 25 years of handicapping experience to the table. CEO Steve Budin, the author of Bets, Drugs, and Rock and Roll, is the man responsible for creating the sports betting industry. Together, they are the Sports Advisors, your number one source for winners. The NFL season keeps rolling along, and here we are already in week number five, and we have seven prime games that we are going to break down for you from an ATS perspective. Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here along with Steve Budin. And Steve, let's start off with a game between Jacksonville and Houston. It looked like the Jaguars were going to blow out Philadelphia last week, but as it turned out, they couldn't hold on to that early two-touchdown lead in Philly. Yeah, and I think nailing down to seven games on a schedule is much better if you're a gambler out there. We always say it, Al, you can't just bet every game on the board. You kind of gra- have to gravitate towards certain games and then do a deeper dive into those to find your best bet. Jacksonville versus Houston. And thank God Houston fans have the Astros, Al, because the Texans are hard to watch. In fact, I put out an Amber Alert on the Texans because they're missing in action. They're winless and they're hopeless. Uh, With the Jags, don't be overly concerned with the sloppy play in Philly. I think it was a Millie Vanilli moment, so just blame it on the rain. Jags get back on track versus a Houston defense that's, they've allowed uh, 57 points combined in the last two weeks. Uh, It's a perfect spot for Jacksonville to return to form. I'll take Jacksonville here, minus the points. Uh, The Jaguars in that torrential downpour at Philadelphia, the guy who struggled the most was Trevor Lawrence, five turnovers, four fumbles in that game, 11 for 23, 174 yards, two touchdowns, but one interception. As again, Jags jumped out to the 14 nothing lead and then watched Philadelphia come right back and ultimately win that game 29-21. I'm with you. I love Jacksonville in this spot because Houston has shown me absolutely nothing other than the fact that they're going to be in the market for a new quarterback when they get a high draft pick come next April because Davis Mills is not the guy. I also, in reviewing that game against the Chargers, noted that Mills was sacked four times, pressured 15 times, yet the Chargers were without Joey Bosa, who's out for the season. And yet that's the type of pressure they put on him. Jacksonville's defense has played exceptionally well this season. I think that they will be able to put a lot of pressure on Mills and Mills's numbers this year. You know, last year, Jacksonville thought maybe they had uncovered a gem and perhaps Mills had a shot at being their quarterback of the future. But coming into this game, he's 22nd in the league in completion percentage, 18th in passing yards, 26th in yards per completion, which of all those numbers is probably the most telling stat. And his QBR ranking is 29th. I think yours is 27th. So that doesn't say much about Davis Mills. So I'm with you. And again, this number sitting at seven, as I always like to say, if that number sitting on seven, I'm buying down that half point anywhere between six and seven on the favorite. And uh, I love the Jacksonville Jaguars at home. I think this is a dirt cheap price and we're getting value because they lost last week at Philly. Uh, Before we go any further, let's remind everybody, if they happen to be watching this online, they have seen the scroll at the bottom of the screen regarding the one-day free all-access pass we offer for the last 20 years over at thesportsadvisors.com. Well, this is a great addition to the website. We've been doing it forever. It's something that we do that no one else does. We allow you to come backstage and see the rock stars right before they go out. So you can actually see what all the pay uh, the paid customers see. You don't have to pay anything for it at all. We're very confident in what we have, that you'll come in, that you'll like it, and that you'll become our customer. No one else does it because they really can't. We're the only ones that do it. We're the only ones that can. So take advantage of it. What do you have to lose? No, the only way you lose is if you don't take advantage of the offer, because normally if you were to purchase the one-day all-access pass, it would cost you $99. If you were to buy all 10 or more handicappers individually, it would cost you well over $1,000 to get their picks. And the most unique thing about the all-access pass, guys, if you want the plays on Sunday, you can get them, or you can pick it on Saturday, or you want the Monday night football play, the option is yours. And on Sundays, you can actually get a bonus day for free. So check it out, the all-access pass over at thesportsadvisors.com. Next game, interesting one, I think. Buffalo laying two touchdowns at home against Pittsburgh. The Bills with the big comeback win 
at Baltimore and the Steelers. Well, they're the Steelers and Mike Tomlin finally woke up, smelled the coffee, smelled the roses, whatever it was. But he finally wised up and made a change of quarterback. Yeah, and for Pittsburgh, Kenny Pickett showed us why, you know, he has that last name. He got picked off three times last week, and he lost to who? The Jets. I mean, Buffalo is at least three touchdowns better than the Jets. Uh, Buffalo needs a running game, Al, uh, but not to beat the crap out of the Steelers, they don't. In fact, I like the Buffalo Bills here. They should win this game by 20, and don't let the big line scare you. It happens all the time. Gamblers will see a line like this, and they'll keep it moving to the next game. But you got to think why bookies are trying to scare you off this game and off of this side. So I lay the big points with the Bills and the story. And when I saw this game, the first thing that stepped out in my mind was this is probably one of those games where if you're looking at a seven point teaser, this is a great team to put in there. But only if you have that other team that you feel the same way about. I would never put a game into a teaser and then go fishing for another team that never works out. But if along the line and while you're reviewing the card, another game kind of pops out at you. This might be a great team, the Bills, to throw into that seven-point teaser scenario. Number one, I agree with you. You can't be scared by the line. You, as a former odds maker, the guy that created the offshore sports book betting industry some 20 years ago, you know better than anybody that sometimes as a guy who's setting the line, you put at that big number because it does scare people into playing the wrong side of the game. And it's interesting, the public perception of those big numbers, they go, oh, my God, it's it's too big. I've got to jump on the dog. Well, sometimes dogs are dogs with fleas. And that, I think, is the key here with the Steelers. And I've read a number of uh, media reports this week about how this is the biggest number the Steelers have been catching as an underdog since the AFC-NFC merger big deal. They suck. That's, that's exactly. the bottom line. <laughs> There's a reason they're a dog here in this situation. Um, the other thing is, is that I disagree with you here. I beg to differ. And I love teasers. I think, and you know, over the last 20 years we've been together, there is probably nobody that wins more teasers than me. This is a situation I would never play a teaser because I like teasers where I'm taking teams 10 points or less if I'm playing a favorite. And that's my sweet spot. 10 points or less and generally anywhere between six and 10 points is my sweet spot. Two touchdowns, that's too much for me in a teaser. That's just not a number that I lean toward. But either way, I think in this situation, you play Buffalo straight up. I love the way the Bills came back. I liked them last week at Baltimore. They got off to a miserable start. They were down 20 to 3 with about four minutes to go in the first half. And then they roared back 23 20 at Baltimore. And Kenny Pickett, nice debut statistically on one side of the ledger 10 for 13, 120 yards. The problem is he had three interceptions as well. And, uh, the only thing, and I'm going to caution everybody out there for the third straight week about the Bills or, uh, or a game involving the Bills. But this side, not the injuries about the Bills, but the opposite side, the Steelers, Cam Hayward, uh, Minka Fitzpatrick, Cam Sutton, Terrell Edmonds. They've got a lot of injuries, which means the Bills are even a stronger play. Uh, the next game, Minnesota and Chicago. You've loved the Vikings all season long. You've been riding them. Uh, they delivered last week in London against the Saints. Now they're a seven-point favorite at home against Chicago. And I have just one thing to say, uh, Justin Fields. Yeah. Look, uh, I think there'll be some jet lag for many Al as they fly back from London and try to adjust without a bye week. Uh, quarterback Kirk Cousins. He's been okay, but can you trust him enough to lay seven points at home? Uh, this time I'm going to say no way. He's a bankroll busting five and 12, last 17 as a as a chalk at home. And now the Bears are not very good either. Um, they're going to go up against the mini defense, though, that's given up eight yards per pass and 4.6 yards per carry. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I'm going to bet the Bears here plus the points. You know, we get, again, as I always like to point out, we simply pick the roster of games that we're going to discuss, but we never discuss who we like in these games prior to starting this recording, and we're doing this here on Wednesday morning. So I figured I'd cue you up by saying Justin Fields. I know. I am, yeah. I am stunned that you are backing the Bears. I don't yeah. care if Minnesota was coming back from Australia and they have jet lag and they flew in yesterday. I'm still, if it's Justin Fields quarterbacking anybody, I'm going against Justin Fields. 
I've just seen nothing. This guy last week, 11 for 22, 174 yards, and the 20 to 12 loss to the Giants, who were without their top two quarterbacks in the end, were running the Wildcat with uh, Barkley because they had nobody else. And listen, the Giants sat field six times on the season. He's a 51% passer in four games. He's thrown for 471 yards, two touchdowns, four interceptions, and big sack 16 times. But I think the metric that's most important here is the Bears' run defense. They've allowed the most yards in the NFL through four weeks, 733 yards, 5.1 yards per carry, also near the bottom third in the league. And if they couldn't stop Saquon Barkley, who had 31 carries, 146 yards, I don't see them stopping Dalvin Cook who, despite playing with a banged-up shoulder in London last week, had 20 carries, 76 yards, 4.4 yards per carry. So although I'm not a big Vikings fan, I like the Vikings in this spot because you've got a Bears team that's 1-5 and against the spread their last six on the road. So I will go opposite of you and just say that I am shocked. We should probably just bet each other on this game rather than play the big any (laughs) place. Well, this is not a okay. game I would actually bet, Al. And you know what? I'll say this. Most of us at the end of the day, even the best of the best, wind up being 50-50. What always separates the rubber from the road when it comes to gambling is really being able to identify the one game that you're going to bet and put your money on. And I think that's what makes a good handicapper, you know, and, and identifying that one game. This would not be that one game for me. I'd rather win the one game I'm betting and lose every other other game than hit 80 percent but not be able to put together the one that wins in my pocket 100 percent. i mean listen last week we ran down every single game on the board and i think i told you at least six or seven times i hate this game i'm not enthused right. by this game i'm not enthralled by this game i think i had seven who cares games of the week yeah, it last was a week. seven way tie for who gives a crap yeah and <laughs> the one game i love the dallas cowboys I only needed one game to win, and that was the game beating Washington. You only need one, and we talk about it all the time, the surround and pound theory that we've always been talking about for 20-some years. One game, maximize your efforts, maximize your potential. It's not the playing four, five, six games uh, because the VIG is going to kill you, and mathematically the odds are stacked against you. But again, we're preaching to the choir because there's some guys out there who will – absolutely be playing seven games this Sunday. And again, preaching to the choir, I can't help you. Uh, This next one, the Miami Dolphins uh, coming off the extra couple of days rest, going with Teddy Bridgewater, naturally a quarterback, going against the Jets. You were in Miami. I don't know if I want to say you may have been a former Jets fan, a current Jets fan. I don't know. I don't want to put that onus on you, but I'm going to throw this in your lap and let you take this one away. No, I was a former Jets fan. I went to, you know, Jets uh, fans anonymous. So I've gotten over that problem and addiction. Unfortunately, my son has the gene and he's a Jet fan and he's high on his horse from last week. But Al, I think, you know, at the end of the day, you got to be a fan of your pocket and there's value here. And I love this game. Jets coming off a win. Dolphins coming off a loss. This game should be six and a half. At least the Dolphins are more skilled than the Jets at almost every key position. Uh, uh, this is just a bad line. I take Miami here as the Jet fans and this Jet team are going to be reminded this week of who they really are. You know, I didn't know where you were going there, but I'm 100 percent in agreement. I look at this and I'm going, Miami is so much better. They should be, as you said, a six, six and a half point favorite. So I, let's let's cheer the Jets for the fact that they won against Pittsburgh. But. Are we supposed to overlook the fact that the Jets were down 20 to 10 early in the fourth quarter before rallying for the 24 20 win? Uh, perception versus reality. And you've got Miami with the extra prep time, which I think is so crucial in this spot. Going into the Thursday night game, they were coming off that emotionally and physically draining game in the heat and humidity in which they hung on to beat Buffalo. Then they lose their quarterback. Having that extra couple of days to kind of regroup and now going on the road, I'm not worried about them. Uh, They have a much better defense than the Jets. And Zach Wilson, everybody's like, oh, Zach Wilson, he led the fourth quarter comeback. He was pathetic for the first three quarters. So when you look at the fact that his final number is 18 for 36, 252 yards, and the, the touchdown in the fourth quarter, 
oh, well, let's not over the fa- overlook the fact that he had two interceptions and he was sacked four times. Uh, Miami's just a better team, and, yeah, I would lay six, seven points in this spot. Next up, we've got the Chargers at Cleveland. L.A. rebounding from that pathetic effort two weeks ago at home against Jacksonville with a big win over Houston. Well, big deal. Houston, as we already told you, sucks. Uh, 34-24. The Browns, meanwhile, I've got to say, if in case you didn't watch last week's show, Steve thought Atlanta was the play and the Falcons won outright. So these two teams, I, I don't care. This might be my who cares game of the week. Steve, I'm going to put it in your lap and let you take this one from the start. Well, the Houston defense did make the Chargers offense look good last week. And Justin Herbert threw for 340 yards in the win. But I don't think the Browns defense is much better besides Brissett. He's not going to be able to trade touchdowns with Herbert. And the Chargers are 5-1 and one last six against the spread as a road chalk. The Browns are 8-19 and 19 as a home dog since like 1912. I mean, I play the L.A. Chargers here. No other way to go. Lay the points. I am in agreement with you. It's not a game that I'm enthused about. Again, it's my who cares game of the week of the seven that we're covering today. I do like Herbert here. The thing that bothers me, however, and let's acknowledge the fact that the Browns were out were without uh, Clowney and Garrett last week. And as we're recording this on Wednesday morning, I don't know if either are going to play this week without those two pressuring Justin Herbert. He should have a field day once more. However, the Chargers' big issue here is they cannot stop the run. And you've got Nick Chubb, you've got Kareem Hunt, and you've got a Chargers team that has the worst run defense in the NFL, giving up 5.42 yards per carry. Actually, that's the second worst in the NFL. They make the Chicago Bears look good. So, you know, if the Browns can control the line of scrimmage uh, with Hunt and Chubb, that's a bonus for them. But... Again, the Browns defense just hasn't lived up to expectations. And with Herbert there, uh, especially with that, if Garrett and Clowney aren't there to put pressure on him, he should be able to pick uh, the Browns secondary apart. Uh, he's still playing with that broken rib cartilage, uh, cartilage injury, but looked damn good last week. That's for sure. 340 yards and two touchdowns, as you said. Uh, Philadelphia looking to go five and zero, oh, they are the league's only undefeated team laying five and a half at arizona the cardinals fighting their way back to square their record after four games which way are you going in this one well al the eagles are flying i know they're one of your favorite teams they're off to a four and zero start uh they showed they can win pretty then they now have shown that they can win ugly uh, arizona always gets off to a slow start and that's not going to work against these eagles i mean home field advantage for the cards i beg to differ the cards like it at home about as much as those two kids in mommy dearest no more wire hangers in fact they've dropped their last six versus the line at home so i'm going to take the eagles here and lay the points no more wire hangers <laughs> uh, I don't know where you get this stuff. Okay, listen, uh, you're right. Uh, Arizona, another team you have to look at. Last week's win at Carolina, a miserable Carolina Panthers team. Uh, do you give them props that they won 26-16 on the road, or do you give them demerits for the fact they needed 16 points in the fourth quarter in order to win the damn game against the bad Panthers team? Uh, Carolina only had 220 yards in that game. But the Panthers gave the game away with three turnovers. I love the Eagles here. Granted, that five and a half number, I always say, you know, when you're laying five, five and a half, you're out on an island. You're laying a touchdown. That's what it comes down to here. But Philadelphia has shown me absolutely uh, no worries or concerns with that offense. It is so dynamic. Last week in the torrential rain. They couldn't throw the ball as effectively at the outset, so they gave the ball to Miles Sanders. And when you have a quarterback as dynamic as Jalen Hurts who can take over a game with his legs, uh, it's it's hard to stop that offense right now. And the defense has played so well. And the one thing with Arizona, this offense is basically Kyler Murray and Kyler Murray. They haven't been able to establish much of a ground game. And the offense – Passing-wise, has not really been that good this year because without DeAndre Hopkins, who's still serving, what, uh, two more games of a six-game suspension, uh, they haven't been able to take to the air that well. So I'm going with Philly. And that brings us to the Sunday night game, our last game on the board. And by the way, guys, if you happen to be watching us, 
uh, subscribe because that way you can absolutely know when Steve and I, our show here is available and also our show that I do with Rick Torino in college football. So make sure you've got the little button down in the corner, subscribe so you can always be alerted. Baltimore, minus three at home against Cincinnati and home has not been a happy place for the Ravens this season. No, but I do think we're getting some value here because Baltimore did dominate the Bills for most of that game last week before suffering a horrible loss after blowing a 20-point lead. And this whole blowing big leads for Baltimore, that has to stop. They either have to fix that problem or they're going to fail miserably. Uh, Since he beat a Miami team, you said it, they were coming off a tough game, both physically and emotionally. It was hot. It was against the best team in their division. They had to pull out all the stops, and quite frankly, they were due for a letdown. Um, I think these two teams don't belong on the same field together. I think Baltimore wins this one by double digits. I'm going to take the Ravens here, minus the points, and on the money line. So that's a bold statement there. Interesting. I think that the Ravens, uh, by the way, that uh, winning every single game in the preseason for all these years, it's really paid off once again for Baltimore here. But, uh, you know, you you blow a 17-point lead at home to the Bills. You blow a 21-point lead at home against Miami. And that's why you're 0-2 at home coming into this game. What I look at this game and I, the metrics that stand out to me, at Baltimore's pass defense, they're allowing a league-high 315 yards a game. And I've said repeatedly here, almost every single show we've talked about the Ravens, that their defense is a fraud. Again, it's my favorite phrase. It's, re, it's reality versus perception. Everybody thinks that this Ravens defense is good, but they're thinking about the Ravens defense when Ray Lewis was a middle linebacker. Right. That Ravens defense is years old. It is not good. It doesn't generate much of a pass rush. They have some big names in the secondary, but they don't produce because the pass rush doesn't get to anybody. I was uh, encouraged by the fact that Miami was only able to sack Joe Burrow one time and Burrow's receivers now with the emergence of T. Higgins, who had the big game against the Dolphins with seven catches, 124 yards, along with Tyler Boyd, along with Jamar Chase, that is a dangerous trio. What the negative for Cincinnati, as far as I'm concerned, is the run game just hasn't been able to develop. Joe Mixon, 24 carries, 61 yards against the Dolphins. Last year, this guy ran for 1,200 yards, averaged 4.1 yards per carry. This year, he's averaging 2.7. So with all that being said, I actually lean towards Cincinnati buying up from three, three and a half to, you know, buying up to half point on the Bengals here. Uh, Joe Burrow in two games against the Beng- uh, against the Ravens last year, 941 yards, seven touchdowns. And I like the fact Cincinnati's had the extra two days to prep coming off the Monday night game. So again, we're on opposite sides, but Uh, Again, this is the game that I will be watching and not playing on Sunday because these marquee games are always the toughest ones. And some games are better to be watched than to bet because I've always said, you know, I like to concentrate the most where the odds makers concentrate the least. And the Ravens uh, game here against the Bengals, this is the game. There's a reason it's a Sunday night game. I don't think there's a lot of value. You do, but I don't think there's a lot of value here in, in betting this one. Well, and it's always going to be those games that are bet more by the public where the lines are tougher to, to, to go against because the public has sharpened up those lines. And it gets to a point as a gambler where you look at that line, you go, wow, that's the line I would have made on the game. And that makes it harder to bet where these games that aren't as focused on by the by the gamblers. You know, those are where you can get your value. And I think that's what you're talking about. Absolutely. And guys, again, remember, uh, we've got a lot of hot handicappers at the site. Uh, Rick Torino coming into this weekend has won 11 of his last 15 football releases. You've got Trace Adams, who uh, was come, uh, went 5-1 uh, and one last week with his college and pro football releases. You can get their plays and all the plays of at least 10 handicappers for free. Once again, went to one day free all access pass at the sportsadvisors.com. Absolutely. And that's you should definitely take advantage of that. That's the one thing that we do that no one else does. And like I said before, what in the world do you have to lose? Guys, check it out. Uh, One day free all access pass over the sportsadvisors.com and you pick the day that you want to get the place. The only way you lose is if you don't take advantage of it, like Steve said. 
for Steve Budin. I am Al DeMarco, and that's this week's show. Make sure you check out the college football show with Rick Torino, also available, and subscribe to the channel. And we will catch you next week on the sportsadvisors.com.